So let's go back to New York and the fate of former President Donald Trump in a lower Manhattan courthouse. For more, let's welcome in the former acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker. Mr. Attorney General, great to have you back. We appreciate you being with us again. Um, so Alvin Bragg, when he was campaigning a couple years ago, literally campaigned on taking down Donald Trump. Let's listen. ...and complied with under the Victim's Bill of Rights and consider what I've been... Look, that, that, that is uh, the number one issue. I'm ready to go wherever the facts take me and to inherit that case. And I think, you know, it'd be hard to argue with the fact that that's, that'd be the most important, uh, most high-profile case. Uh, and I've seen him up front and seen the lawlessness that he can do. So, Matt, that's Alvin Bragg right there. He just the, the number one issue for an obscure candidate for DA of Manhattan was running on taking down Donald Trump. Doesn't that right there prove that this is completely political? Yeah, and I'm sure uh, Mr. Bragg was hoping that that video never saw the light of day again on some obscure uh, show that he went on just to try to promote his, uh, you know, uh, long shot campaign. But, you know, he obviously got the back of George Soros and people saw him as the person that could do exactly what he appears to be about to do, which is indict Donald Trump. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's just an indictment is not uh, anything other than the first step. There are going to be a lot of twists and turns. A lot of courts are going to hear uh, the facts and the law. And I just, again, we've talked about it before on your channel, how it's just, it's going to be, it's going to start as a weak case and it's only going to get weaker. Yeah, sir, according to one report, uh, Bragg downgraded 52% uh, percent of felonies to misdemeanors in New York. But now suddenly this is an eight-year-old case. The feds wouldn't even prosecute it, passed the statute of limitations, upgraded to a felony, is back on the table. I mean, is this even constitutional? Yeah, Allison, that's, you know, those are all true and, and good points. And remember, uh, New York is experiencing significant violent crime as well. And, uh, you know, that should be his number one priority is that, safety of his fellow citizens. But, um, you know, the constitutionality of this is going to be very interesting because it does involve, uh, it appears, federal law to to uh, increase it to a felony in the first place. And, you know, that analysis obviously is going to have to be done by the federal courts. And I can tell you that both the Federal Election Commission and the Department of Justice, while I was at the Department of Justice, looked at this case and determined that there was no campaign finance violation. So it seems to me that if that's what's necessary to make this a felony that that's going to fail, and you know you're left with this uh, this misdemeanor of uh, of a uh, you know a falsification of business records, which just you know is, has that statute of limitations for sure has long passed since it was only two years. Yeah. Okay. So. But Fine. It looks like Donald Trump, the case appears to be extremely weak. Quite frankly, the case in Georgia appears to be pretty weak at this point as well. They're, they're cherry picking sound bites to fit a narrative down in Georgia. That's another story for another day. Back to New York. If this does happen, Matt, how historic is this? We're talking about a former president who might be hauled into a courthouse next week at some point. He'll, he'll be fingerprinted. He might be handcuffed. Um, who knows? The Secret Service says that wouldn't happen because that would that makes him vulnerable um, as a former president. He's still got Secret Service protection. And then he'd have a mugshot taken. I mean, we are in really historic territory here. Yeah, we are. And it is completely unprecedented. You know, and this is just uh, we're watching history play out because we've never experienced anything like this in our republic uh, for the first, you know, 200 and almost 50 years. But, you know, Rob, I think what we're going to have to do is rely on our institutions, uh, rely on uh, the rule of law, rely on uh, judges and juries uh, in these cases to, you know, see the truth. And remember, reason and common sense always apply. And, you know, any juror that sees this is going to have to understand uh, that it's not just trying to convict Donald Trump of, of some, you know, charge that's weak. Uh, this is about, you know, trying to prosecute a, uh, you know, political opponent of Alvin Bragg, a political opponent of Joe Biden. And I think this is a, a very difficult and dangerous moment in American history. And I hope that we're strong enough to survive it. Yeah, absolutely. Just a quickly, sir, have you talked to former President Trump at all? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not representing him in any of, the, any of his legal matters. I did uh, fly back and forth to Iowa a week ago on Monday uh, and spent some time with him. Uh, but we were just talking about Iowa and the campaign, uh, nothing about his legal gotcha. um, cases. Yeah, and this wouldn't prevent him from, from running or, or serving, at least right now. Is that accurate? Uh, no, not at all. Okay. Not at all. In fact, none of these charges, uh, the only thing that would prevent him from running 
for office would be a conviction of an impeachment. And as we know, both of those failed when they tried to do that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, again, another story for another day. Uh, Matthew Whitaker, good to see you again. Thanks for being with us this morning and thank breaking you. that down. It's going to be interesting uh, to see how this All plays right, Ron, out over the next thank few you. days. Thank yeah, you. thank you.